Welcome to Easy A Homeschool Academy. Let's learn about the systems of the human body. The human body is a complex and highly organized structure made up of cells, tissues, and organs, each playing a vital role in maintaining the body's overall function and health. To understand how the body works, it is essential to learn about the different systems that make up this intricate organism. Each system consists of specific organs and structures that work together to perform particular tasks. Muscular Skeletal System This system provides structure and support to the body and enables movement. It includes bones, muscles, cartilage, tendons, and ligaments. An adult human body has 206 bones. However, this number can be higher in children because some bones, such as those in the skull and spine, have not yet fused. The skull protects the brain and supports the structures of the face. Vertebral column. This is composed of individual vertebrae. It protects the spinal cord and supports the head and body. The rib cage protects the heart and lungs. The pelvis supports the weight of the upper body and provides attachment points for lower limbs. The femur is the longest and strongest bone in the body. It supports the weight of the upper body when standing and walking. The tibia and fibula support the body and form the lower leg. The humerus supports arm movement. The radius and ulna allow for the rotation of the forearm. The scapula provides attachment points for muscles that move the arm. The clavicle connects the arm to the body. The patella protects the knee joint. The carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges are hand bones and they enable hand and finger movements. The tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges are foot bones and they support and enable foot and toe movements. The human body has over 600 muscles. These muscles vary in size, function, and location, and they work together to facilitate movement, maintain posture, and support bodily functions. The deltoids are located in the shoulder and it allows for arm rotation and lifting. Pectoralis major is located in the chest and it helps in arm flexion and adduction. Biceps branchi are located in the upper arm. It allows for elbow flexion. Triceps branchi located in the upper arm. It allows for elbow extension. Rectus abdominis located in the abdomen. It flexes the vertebral column. Obliques, located on the sides of the abdomen, they aid in rotation and lateral flexion of the spine. Latissimus dorsi, located in the back, it allows for arm extension, adduction, and internal rotation. Trapezius, located in the upper back and neck, it allows for shoulder and neck movements. Gluteus maximus, located in the buttocks, it allows for hip extension and rotation. Quadriceps femoris, located in the front of the thigh, it allows for knee extension. Hamstrings, located in the back of the thigh, they allow for knee flexion and hip extension. Gastrocnemius, located in the calf, it allows for plantar flexion of the foot. Soleus, located in the calf, it aids in plantar flexion of the foot. Tibialis anterior, located in the front of the leg, it allows for dorsiflexion of the foot. These bones and muscles work in coordination to facilitate movement, provide stability, and protect vital organs within the body. Nervous System The nervous system controls and coordinates all body activities by transmitting signals to and from different parts of the body. It is composed of the brain, spinal cord, and a vast network of nerves. It is divided into two major parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. 
Each of these parts has specific components and functions. As part of the central nervous system, there is the brain. Cerebrum, the largest part of the brain responsible for voluntary actions, sensory perception, thought, reasoning, memory, and emotions. It is divided into two hemispheres and four lobes. Cerebellum, located under the cerebrum, it coordinates muscle movements, maintains posture, and balance. Brainstem connects the brain to the spinal cord and controls vital functions such as breathing, heart rate, and blood pressure. It includes the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. The spinal cord is a long, thin bundle of nerves that extends from the brainstem down the vertebral column. It transmits information between the brain and the rest of the body and is responsible for reflexes. As part of the peripheral nervous system, somatic nervous system controls voluntary movements and transmits its sensory information to the CNS. It consists of motor neurons that control skeletal muscles and sensory neurons that convey information from the skin, muscles, and joints of the CNS. Also part of the peripheral nervous system is the automatic nervous system. This regulates involuntary functions such as heart rate, digestion, and respiratory rate. It has two main divisions, the sympathetic nervous system that prepares the body for stress or emergency situations, otherwise known as fight or flight response, and the parasympathic nervous system, which conserves energy and restores the body to a state of calm, rest and digest response. The nervous system's intricate network of neurons and pathways allows for the efficient processing and response to internal and external stimuli, ensuring the body's proper functioning and adaptation to its environment. The respiratory system. This system allows us to breathe. It is responsible for taking in oxygen from the air we inhale and expelling carbon dioxide from the air we exhale. It includes the upper respiratory tract. The nose and nasal cavity are part of the upper respiratory tract, the primary entry point for outside air. The nasal cavity filters, warms, and moistens the air before it moves to the lungs. Pharynx or throat. A muscular tube that connects the nasal cavity to the larynx and esophagus. It serves as a pathway for both air and food. Larynx or voice box, located below the pharynx. It contains the vocal cords and is responsible for sound production. It also acts as a passageway for air between the pharynx and trachea. Now let's look at the lower respiratory tract. The trachea is part of the lower respiratory tract, a tube that connects the larynx to the bronchii, providing a clear airway for air to enter and exit the lungs. It is reinforced with cartilage rings to maintain its shape. Bronchi. The trachea divides into two main bronchi, left and right, that enter each lung. These bronchi further subdivide into smaller bronchi and bronchioles within the lungs. Bronchioles are smaller ear passages that branch off from the bronchi, leading to the alveoli. They regulate airflow and distribute air evenly within the lungs. Alveoli. These are tiny air sacs at the end of the bronchioles where gas exchange occurs. The alveoli are surrounded by capillaries allowing oxygen to enter the blood and carbon dioxide to be removed. These components work together to ensure efficient breathing and gas exchange, which are vital for sustaining life and supporting the body's metabolic processes. The circulatory system. This system, also known as the cardiovascular system, is responsible for transporting blood throughout the body. It delivers oxygen and nutrients to cells while removing waste products like carbon dioxide. The heart, 
Blood vessels and blood are the primary components of this system. The heart is a muscular organ that pumps blood throughout the body. It is divided into four chambers, two upper chambers and two lower chambers. The upper chambers are called the atria and the lower chambers are called the ventricles. The heart has four valves, tricuspid, pulmonary, mitral, and aortic. They ensure unidirectional blood flow. Blood vessels. Blood vessels are a network of tubes that carry blood throughout the body. They include arteries, which carry oxygen-rich blood away from the heart to the tissues. The largest artery is the aorta. Arterioles are small branches of arteries that lead to capillaries. Capillaries are tiny blood vessels where the exchange of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients, and waste products occur between blood and tissues. Venules are small vessels that collect blood from capillaries and transport it to the veins. Veins carry oxygen-poor blood back to the heart. The largest veins are the superior and inferior vena cava. Blood. This is the fluid that circulates through the blood vessels. It contains red blood cells which carry oxygen from the lungs to the body and carbon dioxide from the body to the lungs. White blood cells. They defend the body against infections and foreign substances. Platelets aid in blood clotting to prevent excessive bleeding, and plasma, the liquid component of blood that transports cells, nutrients, hormones, and waste products. The circulatory system's efficient operation is crucial for sustaining life and ensuring that all body cells receive the necessary substances to function properly. The digestive system the digestive system breaks down the food we eat into nutrients that the body can absorb and use for energy, growth, and repair. Here are some of the major components of the digestive system. Here is the mouth. This is the entry point for food. The process of digestion begins here with chewing, also known as mastication, which breaks down food into smaller pieces. Saliva, produced by the salivary glands, contains enzymes that start the chemical digestion of carbohydrates. Pharynx, a muscular tube that connects the mouth to the esophagus. It serves as a pathway for the movement of food from the mouth to the esophagus. The esophagus is a muscular tube that connects the pharynx to the stomach. Peristalsis, a series of wave-like muscle contractions, moves food down the esophagus to the stomach. Stomach, a muscular organ that mixes food with gastric juices, including hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes, to form a semi-liquid substance called chyme. The stomach lining also produces mucus to protect it from the acidic environment. Small intestine, a long, coiled tube where most digestion and nutrient absorption occur. It consists of three parts. The duodenum, the first part where chyme mixes with bile and pancreatic juices to continue digestion. Jujunum, the middle part where most nutrient absorption occurs. And bileum, the last part where absorption of bile acids and vitamin B12 occurs. The large intestine absorbs water and electrolytes from the remaining indigestible food matter and compacts it into feces. It contains several parts. The cecum, the beginning part, is connected to the ileum. The colon, divided into the ascending, traverse, descending, and sigmoid sections, and then the rectum, the final section where feces are stored before being expelled through the anus. Anus is the opening at the end of the digestive tract through which feces are expelled from the body. These components and functions work together to ensure that the body receives the nutrients it needs for energy, 
growth and maintenance while eliminating waste products. Urinary system. The urinary system removes waste products and excess fluids from the body. It includes the kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra, which work together to maintain the body's fluid and electrolyte balance. Kidneys. Two bean-shaped organs located on either side of the spine, just below the rib cage, are called the kidneys. The kidneys filter blood to remove waste products and excess substances, which are excreted as urine. They also regulate blood pressure, electrolyte balance, and red blood cell production. The cortex, the outer layer of the kidney, is where filtration occurs. Medulla, the inner region of the kidney containing the renal pyramid, where urine is concentrated. Renal pelvis, the central part of the kidney that collects urine before it moves to the ureter. Ureters, two narrow tubes that carry urine from the kidneys to the bladder. Peristaltic contractions of the ureter walls move urine downward. Bladder, a hollow muscular organ located in the pelvis that stores urine until it is ready to be excreted. The bladder expands as it fills with urine and signals the need to urinate when full. Urethra, a tube that carries urine from the bladder to the outside of the body during urination. The urinary system's efficient operation is essential for maintaining homeostasis regulating blood pressure, and ensuring the proper function of other bodily systems. The human body is composed of several interconnected systems, each with specialized functions that contribute to overall health and survival. Each system plays a crucial role in maintaining homeostasis and ensuring the body's overall functionality. They work together in intricate ways, often overlapping in their functions, to support life and adapt to changes in the internal and external environment. Understanding these systems helps us appreciate the complexity and resilience of the human body. I hope you learned something about the human body today. Thanks for taking this learning journey with me. Until next time. As always, thank you for watching. Tell us what you want to see next. Email EZA homeschoolacademy at yahoo.com. Like and share our videos. Please subscribe to our channel.